It's me again. I uh, thought I'd make a video. I'm up to 81 subscribers. I've gone from like 76 or 77 to 81, like almost overnight. That's like crazy. Um, yeah. Anyway, someone asked me, what is my occupation? Because they actually seen, <laughs> they actually seen my seek profile, which is pretty long. <laughs> So, I guess I was born into the family farm, and I did that until I was 22 or 23 full time. After that, I contracted using some of our own farming equipment, um, and contracted myself out as labour hire. Uh, it was farm handing for other guys. In my contracting, I worked for five different people over a year. Uh, so I had five different bosses, which two two of which clashed. So that made it for interesting. You just book yourself out for one job and get called in for another. And uh, some of that farming land that I'd farmed pretty steep with only guys crazy enough to do it it hasn't been farmed since uh, some, well, some of it's had sheep on it since but none of it's been cropped since um, then what did I do I spent a year or two two I seeing and kicking at a chicken farm actually I went to two moved around a little bit had a problem with uh, workplace harassment at one of them. And uh, I don't know, thought maybe that the problem was me. Maybe uh, that I was too soft, but um, people know some of the people that are still working there that were giving, well, actually, they're working in similar scenario to what I was working in and said, no, it's not you, it's them. And that stuff's not on. So, uh, I moved from one farm to another, and uh, that's where I got the two I seeing job at the uh, chicken farm. Um, and I lived out in the house there by myself. So after four o'clock, I went a bit crazy because four o'clock in the evenings, all the other workers were gone, and so it was me until seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning, and that was it, and couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. Um, and one of the managers come and sabotaged two of my sheds, turned all the water pressures up and had wet litter and sick birds and um, real ammonia smell throughout the shed. So after culling 2,000 in each shed and you know, 50 or 60 birds a day for the next fortnight, and uh, getting the shed to air out and whatnot, and the litter to dry a bit, and it never dries, it just sort of dries on top. But uh, yeah, and then putting some antibiotics through the water, yes, they do do that. Don't let anyone tell you that they don't, because they do. Um, and lowering all the water pressures again, uh, the shed was stable, and yeah, well, that's yours too. So it was. Uh, Two out of two out of eight sheds wasn't bad. Two of them are five hundred footers, and they were all tunnel sheds. And uh, and the rest of them were, were two hundred fifty or three hundred feet. I can't remember, but they were old cross flow sheds, converted to semi tunnel. By the time I left, all bar one. Uh, that still had misters. Um, did that. Then what did I do after I left there? Because it got so bad that, you know, like, people were turning water off on the, on my sheds and stuff like that. Well, one person. So, in order to get me to leave, because the thing is, I was getting better results. So, um, yeah, I was only there for two, maybe three batches. Well, it, nearly three batches. I come in halfway through on one and picked the results up pretty well. 
uh, in the short time that I was there. <laughs> I did actually go back. The farm was run by somebody else for a while. I went back. And um, all the stuff that was broken that I couldn't get maintenance to fix when I was there was still broken when I went back. So uh, I said, no, I can't. It was just, just heartbreaking. I just couldn't do it. It kind of scarred me. And I'm just like, no. So then I worked in the vineyard for a while, of driving uh, vineyard harvesters and hand-picking grapes and pruning grapevines and other miscellaneous repair work. I worked for a winery. And... Uh, I worked for them for on and off. It was seasonal um, for ages. Plus, helped my uncle with hay work. We um, did a lot of domestic round bales. Um, so yeah, and I had a bit of a bad run when uh, I started working for the winery. Just luck of the draw. No one had been keeping enough grease and everything, and the nobility mulcher that I was using, done a bearing on one side. And it was pretty, uh, they were pretty fortunate to have me there, if I say so myself, because I mean, being brought up on the farm, I was pretty basically able to fix whatever I broke or whatever wore out. I think mean, this just wore out. And I got a bit heavy handed with a um, Kubota tractor and four foot mower and <laughs> turn the slipper clutch blue it's going a bit quick um but the thing is it hadn't been adjusted in oh, forever and the thing used to leak oil I used to put oil in it every morning I used to leak out the gearbox so i took the gearbox apart put new bearings in it uh, machine the surface for the new seal and put a speedy sleeve in it basically press the sleeve in and put a seal in and uh that 30 year old Howard slasher is still going um, last on you and didn't leak a drop after that build a new protector for it, new guard to try and keep the wire and the, and the string always wire and string in vineyards it's crazy uh, keep that away from the seal um, all that sort of stuff anything that broke sort of got the fix <clears throat> and now, this will this is my ninth year, I think. Uh, I've been working nine years now for for uh, another company, loading uh, trains with hay and grain containers, and working for Australian Government Department of Agriculture, uh, doing. Dry box inspections, checking for quarantine um, pests of concern. So there's that. Um, so yeah, that's got a fair bit of responsibility that goes with it, I suppose. And yeah, I've climbed trees for shits and giggles on my annual leave. <coughs> a mate of mine's an arborist. Well, actually, two mates of mine are arborists. One that lives locally. So I've been climbing trees with him whenever I get the opportunity. And I've been cutting firewood since I was old enough to walk um, with old man. Uh, he had a, had still got, uh, bought, bought, bought when I was born a, a, a uh, still 012. And uh, bought that new, I think, just before I was born. So if you know how old one of those chainsaws is, you will roughly know when I was born. And uh, he had a Canadian 270 as his main saw before that, which he still used. So uh, the steel was the first one I used growing up. And then as I could handle the bigger one, I we'd, by then we didn't use it a hell of a lot, uh, the, the 270 Canadian, but... It's still got a fair bit of use, but it was so big and so heavy that, yeah, it kind of had its had its bite into some really big timber and and uh, yeah, if it wasn't really big, it didn't really come out of the shed or off the back of the ute. Oh, oh man, like wheeling it around, I suppose. Um, I've got one of my own and a two seven one. And a heap of other 
big saws, a couple of big couple of big home lights. Well, one's a big home light, um, a C fifty one. So that's I think uh, seventy four cc's, built nineteen sixty four. So yeah, um, but that's that's basically what I've done so far with my life. <laughs> And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that leads us to this point. Own my own house. And for two years. For two years, yeah, well, that's right. And, yeah, can't really complain, I suppose. Every car I got's paid for. A house is not paid for, you know, like everybody else, you take it out under a 30-year loan and pay as much of it off you can and uh but yeah every car i've got and every motorcycle i've got is paid for started riding at the age of three uh, first motorbike was a jr50 suzuki and um then i've got xr75 honda and oh, yeah we had livestock back then grandpa was still alive so you know like wherever I was available and whatever and could be roused up I was helping move sheep and stuff and running errands so if that meant riding from one end of the property to the other well, that's what you did yeah um, yeah you know it could be things from running out to lu running lunch out or running out a tub of grease out to somebody or yeah, just riding out to go riding a header or something. Or drive it as a kid, whatever. Or header, harvester, whatever you want to call it. I know a lot of people don't understand that. We call them headers over here because they used to just take the heads off. A bit like a stripper front. But yeah, combination harvester. And, uh, yeah. I guess I, I wrote my first ute off at eight years old, a Datsun 620 ute. Old man bought it to re replace the the blue 620 ute that he had because this one was in better bodily condition. And uh, we were out spraying weeds one day and we had two 44s of st uh, stuff on the back. We had uh, chemical in one and <coughs> we had water in the other. I hit a tree, not paying attention. <laughs> Uh, about 30 k's an hour in the paddock and um, pushed the cab forwards old man was picking glass out of his forehead for a while um, yeah you got a scar on your chin I got a scar on my chin I got five stitches and I had bruised ribs because I hit the steering wheel <coughs> 30 k's an hour yeah 30 35 probably 40 I don't think we're doing 50 but uh, yeah both of us were distracted that was back in the days where you used to spray all your summer weeds, you have 60 feet of hose, you'd take out 200 litres of chemical, you'd do a 60 foot radius of the vehicle, move the vehicle, do another 60 feet, and by 10 o'clock in the morning, you'd start at 7, and by 10 o'clock in the morning you'd use 200 litres of chemical. You know, like... <clears throat> I've, lug I've lugged bags, I've... Uh, uh, what else have I done? You know, like, stood out in the heat, finding all these noxious weeds and stuff. And, uh, you know, I used to be able to lift three bushels, or what are they, 90, 92 kilo bags above my head. <clears throat> so, yeah, bloody uh, building stacks of grain. We had a bit of a drought in the mid-2000s. Um, went for three years, and then we had a wet year. You know, through through November and December, it's raining, and we're reaping. I remember reaping triticale, <clears throat> and it was uh, well. Um, uh, it was it was making a lot of noise going through the thrasher of the, the harvester, and it was all shot in the head. It was worth about twenty bucks a ton if you're lucky. Um, yeah, there was only like a few feed places that would take it. Viterra would basically have nowhere for it. You know, we had feed prices that, that didn't exist. They were making them up, up as they go. Um, yeah. Ooh. 
you know, like, uh, you know, it's wet when you put tarp over the harvester to keep the water out of the bin. <laughs> Bloody uh, <clears throat> November, December. Yeah, it was a shit thing to go through, actually. Um, yeah. Like to say, I've seen it all, but something new, something new keeps popping its head up every day that I've never seen. So yeah, um, <laughs> we tilled, we tilled land. So we worked up and and seeded it with um, a conventional seeder. And I guess the next step for us was to go direct drill, but we didn't quite go that far. Um, but yeah. Spent time inside of tractors, repairing as well as driving, obviously, but, you know. Um, <clears throat> we always had a, always rebuilt our own car engines and bike engines and stuff over the years. So I guess I'm not as silly as some people would like to tell you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, gotta have some fun. So, yeah. And, uh... That's about all I got for you at the moment. Um, I hope the uh, 81 subscribers enjoy what this channel has to offer. I don't make many videos. I have. <laughs> we've just had a kid. It'll be five months tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. Oh, day after tomorrow. So yeah, long and short of the story is. Oh. He's taking up some of my time. Most of my time. <laughs> Aren't you? So, yeah. Um, I did get a video out yesterday, which was of the weekend. Um, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> He's happy. You happy at the moment? So, yeah. Um, that's all I really got for you at the moment. I hope you all stick around. Radio. Out for now.